Welcome to Tempe, Arizona for a Pac-12 matchup featuring number 21 Arizona State and Colorado. Sun Devils have a score to settle with the Buffaloes who won round one in Boulder earlier this month. They needed overtime to do it. We have a dynamic backcourt matchup for you today. Perhaps one of the best one going on this Saturday on the West Coast. Trey Holder against the freshman McKinley Wright, the fourth. Odin knew something's got to give with these two fantastic players. McKinley Wright already has 112 assists and on pace to pot possibly break Chauncey Billups' all-time <laughs> freshman market assists. And I'll tell you what, I mean, Colorado almost didn't get McKinley Wright. He almost wound up with Archie Miller at Dayton, but then Archie goes on to Indiana. So quite a, a fine for Tad Boyle and his Buffaloes. Well, you know what? If you're as good as your last game with these guys <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yep. Hey, I'll tell you what, when you join us in a few moments, reporter involvement to the ump degree, our Adrian Branch goes behind the curtain of distraction next. Welcome to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. We're in Tempe, Arizona for Saturday night Pac-12 Conference basketball tonight. Round two between the Colorado Buffaloes and the Arizona State Sun Devils. Earlier this month, Colorado stunned then number four Arizona State in Boulder. We're going to see whether or not they can do it on the road here tonight. Well, welcome to the desert, everybody. Welcome inside Wells Fargo Arena. Steve Quist with you. And I'll tell you what, a month ago, this Arizona State team was ranked as high as number three in the AP poll. After all, they had beaten Kansas. They had beaten Xavier. Now, the conference schedule starts. They've lost five conference games. And as a result, our very own Joe Lenardi has dropped them from a one seed in the NCAA tournament all the way down to an eight seed. And he's done that in an unprecedented 29 days. Despite all of that, this is still a very exciting team. Meantime, for Colorado, more than capable of winning here tonight on the Sun Devils home floor. After all, they did sweep the Arizona schools in Boulder earlier this month. You know what? Enough of me, for goodness sakes. Let's go old school, right? The Tonight Show featuring Johnny Carson, and here's Adrian. Oh, my goodness. Guess what, Steve? I'm right here with the curtain of distraction. Right here. You see these? These are my friends. Five years ago, they came down, and they'll be on this side of the court to try to distract the opponent. It works because in the first half, opponents shoot 73% at the free throw line, but only 65% at the free throw line. One of my all-time favorite, along with these guys right here, was Michael Phelps in the Speedo. I promise you, I won't want to see you in the Speedo. Oh, heck, <laughs> I won't even want to see me in the Speedo. Back to you, partner. Uh, thank you very much. You know I would do it, too. The curtain of distraction certainly never disappoints. And we're about ready to go here inside Wells Fargo Arena. The Pac-12 standings up to the minute because Arizona just finished off Utah but struggled to do it in the second half at the McHale Center. The Wildcats winning 74-73 over Utah, who won in this building a couple of nights ago. So the uh, Wildcats, as we reach the halfway point of the conference season, are at eight and one. Bobby Hurley in his third year. It started with the Sun Devils winning their first 12, ascending to number three nationally. But uh, things have uh, gone awry, if you will, in the conference season. But still, Adrian, a lot of time to right the ship here. Don't ever say I'm not a team player, okay? <laughs> Don't are. ever say I'm not a team player. I was more nervous than that than calling this game. Trey Holder with the game's opening shot. And the rebound to Taylor Bay. Good-looking freshman for Colorado out of Las Vegas. And here come the Buffaloes in transition. There's their starting five. Keep your eye on number 25, McKinley right the fourth. I mean, guy's an outstanding pickup for Colorado. Anytime you're mentioned with Chauncey Billups, with being an all-time player in any department, that's pretty good. Sun Devils have the basketball. They come in at 15 and five overall, three and five in the conference, and a disappointing tenth right now. Great entry pass inside. Evans gets it in to Romello White, and White slams it home. He's a great player above the rim, is he not? For Romello, he couldn't ask for a better start. He's been slow and sluggish the last couple games. A lot of people believe he hit the rookie wall, but that's a good start for him. Colorado, meantime, comes in at 12 and 9 overall, 4 and 5 in the Pac-12 conference. They're in seventh place. And look how fast Arizona State, when a guard rebounds, can get back into transition. And this is Vitaly Scheibel. He 
is a freshman from the Ukraine who can stretch the floor a bit. That was a good looking shot, catching it in rhythm. Arizona State wants to push the tempo. When they talk about over 86 points a game, the most points in over 40 years, they're rolling. Offensive foul against Colorado's Tyler Bay. Practice like you play. This was a play right there at the top. Romello White getting him off to a fast start. They need an imp impact from him in the paint. He and Lake have to impose their will. On January 4th, Colorado beat Arizona State 90-81. to They did it in overtime in Boulder. And then followed it up with a win over another ranked team from this state, the Arizona Wildcats. And they've been playing good as of late. So this is a very much winnable game for both these teams, to be honest with you, A.B. Attitude is everything. Preparation. Wow, tough shot right there. <laughs> Boy, Walton, the center, Whoa. trying to stretch the floor. He's seven feet. Here's White backing in on Walton. And Walton got a piece of it, but White is just so strong, he's able to muscle it up off the window. Two young guys. They're going to be seeing each other for the next three years at least, battling. But again, Arizona State wants to get a post presence. Guard you. When you have shirts named guard you, the outside presence is not the challenge. It's getting some production from the inside. Romello White has all four for the Sun Devils. They're out to a four to nothing advantage and a steal. Here's Cody Justice. Breakaway the other way and he throws it down. And Colorado needs a timeout AB early on. The enthusiasm. Coach Hurley, as we talked to him, he said, I want to see how my guys respond from a 48-hour heartbreaking loss. Well, they've come out, and Cody Justice, the senior, is making a statement. Good basket. What a start by the Sun Devils. They've already turned the Buffaloes over three times here. We're not even three minutes into the basketball game, and Arizona State has a 6-0 lead. It was an intense shoot-around. Coach Hurley knew that he had to get his guys off to a fast start because they've been playing catch-up in so many games. They had a tough practice on Friday. Kind of a met with one another, and Bobby Hurley tried to pick up their spirits and rewarded them, we're told, with ice cream. So, oh, yeah, ice cream. Right? 24 hours later, after vanilla? you get ice cream. Can I get some vanilla? <laughs> we need to play good. Here's McKinley Wright, the fourth. Gets it underneath to King. He puts it up with three to go on the shot clock. Got his own offensive rebound, but a shot clock violation. Four turnovers for Colorado, 3-0-3 in. The home team did everything right on that possession. Didn't bail out Colorado right here. White just going straight up against a very good player and then going up again. Excellent job committing to the defensive principles of not reaching in. Sun Devils lost to Utah on Thursday in this building. Cedric Barefield a big three-pointer with 1.8 to go to force overtime. And Utah put the finishing touches on the Sun Devils for their fifth conference loss. And a made basket by Naaman Wright, the Missouri transfer. And uh, that stops the rising tides of the Sun Devils early on. Yeah, he's a knockdown shooter. He can create his own shots. He's got to be a presence, a consistent presence to take pressure off McKinley Wright and George King. First time we see in the zone. Here's Evans, the senior elevator. Misfires on a three, and they're not shy to take threes. They're going to do it, especially the trio of dark. And back the other way, another Colorado turnover. Holder now. Holder, nice yeah, into White, and it was blocked by the senior King. He's been playing great of late. You're seeing both teams at the rim making good plays. George King shot is short. Home run pass to Holder off the window, something they worked on yes. in the shoot-around. Partner, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, that's the shot they work on. The little teardrop over the shot blocker. Back to a six-point advantage for the Sun Devils. Holder with his first made field goal. King get a shot. And a foul called on the Sun Devils. Vitaly Scheibel called for the personal. Trey Holder off to a fast start with the determination. Practicing the teardrop. Said, man, I'm at home. We're nice and relaxed. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%.
and in part by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. It is the best thing in college basketball going these days. The curtain of distraction is in year number five, and it gets going in the second half. Michael Phelps among the celebs will take part. Oh, he was, he was the all-time. He was the all-time. Sun Devils and their season snapshot got off to the best start in school history at 12-0, but are 3-5 and in the uh, Pac-12 here. And have had some great wins, Xavier and Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse. Well, Coach Hurley had, had talked about that they were ahead of schedule, and it, it was lightning in a bottle. All of a sudden, when you win at Kansas, that's worth five spots in the national rankings. He's playing with house money. This is a young team. Romello White is a redshirt freshman, trying to capitalize on Trey Holder, who's diligent. So they should be very proud. This place is really excited to be a part of A-State. And there are more troops coming. You got Tashawn Cherry, a five-star recruit coming. The last five-star recruit that they had here turned out pretty good, James Harden. You've got a couple of transfers coming. Kyle Cheatham, yep. from San Diego State. He's big and athletic. He'll remind you of Romello White. And you would have had Carlton Braggs from Kansas, but he decided to go to New Mexico. The Kinley Wright, the fourth, misfires. Another empty possession for Colorado, their 12th possession of the game. They've only got two points, for goodness sakes, and four turnovers. You're seeing now Arizona State playing with the urgency like they did when they were on a winning streak. They're playing with a snap defensively, throwing cautious to the win. Five guys moving as one, and then getting out and running. Here's King. He's played really well of late. Good ball movement. And Nikolic buries the three off the bench. Lazer Nikolic, a 6'3 freshman from Serbia, who gets two points a game, gets Colorado within three. That's an excellent uh, change of pace to quiet the crowd, move the basketball on both sides. Evans, the floater, and the rebound king. Boy, ASU trying to get everything in the paint here tonight. And a lob up for Bay from McKinley Wright, the fourth. And it is a one-point game at 8-7. Wow, they said he was a leaper. He adjusted himself and moved his head from the rim. That was impressive. Impressive <laughs> assist by McKinley Wright, the fourth, who, by the way, is second in the Pac-12 at 5.3 assists a game. Yeah, that, this young man who's a freshman, freshman to freshman, going up, here's the alley, and there's the U. <laughs> you can be in the gym all your life, Steve Quist, and you won't jump like that. I won't jump like that. Tad Boyles in his eighth season, he told us a great story about how he wound up getting McKinley right the fourth before the ball game. He was on vacation in Mexico, got a call that this kid was available because he was let out of his letter of intent from Dayton when Archie Miller moved on to Indiana. And he said, I'll be there in a day in Minneapolis. I'm leaving. He left his Mexican Riviera vacation, for goodness sakes. It's paid dividends. I mean, thank God Delta has nine daily non-stops from uh, Mazatlan to <laughs> Minneapolis. Or well, this kid might be playing somewhere else. He's their leading scorer and putting himself with the all-conference team. You've got DeAndre Ayton, who's a lottery pick. Yeah. But this young man is the leading scorer for a Colorado team that's representing themselves very well. Yeah, they got down 6 nothing. This possession, they have a chance to take the lead right to the hole and got it blocked out of there big time. Rejection by Dequan Lake. And a foul on the other end as Holder drove in. Boy, admire this thing. This is called rim protection. Nice drive by McKinley, but blocking that shot and triggering the fast break. Again, going straight up. And just triggering that fast break with, with the block. Nikolic got the foul. We talked to Zylan Cheatham before the ball game. The San Diego State transfer was sitting out. What was the first thing he told us? He said, you're going to love the Quan Lake. He plays above the rim better than anyone that I've been around. It doesn't have to think about running. doesn't have to think about jumping. Just gifted. Joe goes up as high as he needs to be. And no matter how high you go on warm-ups, with the adrenaline flowing, people run faster and jump higher in competition. That's saying a lot because there's a lot of good shot blockers in the Mountain West Conference where Cheatham was last year oh yeah again for coach Hurley he is uh he's going to be loaded right now and even next year he's going to be loaded we saw the Cleveland State transfer he was making every shot didn't see him miss very many <laughs> this is Dominic Collier Collier gets it out Nikolic a deep three not even 
close. Good defense by Arizona State. Remy Martin off the bench. Quite a spark plug. And it's out of bounds. Hey, our big Monday doubleheader on ESPN presented by Joseph A. Bank. Notre Dame squares off against number four Duke at Cameron Indoor at 7 p.m. Eastern. Then it's a Big 12 matchup between fifth-ranked Kansas and Kansas State. Both games are also available on the ESPN app. No, it's, un it's uncharacteristic right now. Arizona State's 0 for 5 from downtown, and all their points are in the paint. But again, they're trying to change things up and really get a balance because yep. you know what Trey Holder is going to do. Remy Martin, does he have one of the all-time classy names? <laughs> Remy Martin. Over the top, that's inside the lake above the rim. He goes and lightly puts it off the glass. Four points in the paint. That was their first field goal in the last three minutes, and it came inside. Almost eight minutes in, a four-point advantage for the Sun Devils. Colorado has never led. And a steal. That's Trey Holder back the other way. Holder against Nikolic. Count it! You want to see a thing of beauty? How about Trey? The steal. The drive. The basket. And then he sticks the landing. <laughs> Ain't no nice fear job. there. Mill Avenue Tempe, always fun, especially on a Friday and Saturday night. Six-point advantage for Arizona State as they try and right the ship in Pac-12 play. The guy trying to keep things uh, in a depressive state, if you will, for Arizona State is Tad Boyle, his team. You see what they've done overall. Had first back-to-back -back wins against AP Top 15 teams in school history. That was the way they started the month after beginning conference play at 0-2. Yeah, what I like about it is strength of schedule. They go out there, they compete. Their strength of schedule is 31, and they've established a young star, McKinley Wright. Look at that, 31 assists is closing in on Chauncey Billups. We had him in the opener at Oregon State at Gill Coliseum. They didn't play particularly well. Following uh, two days later, they went down to Eugene, lost to the Ducks. Remember, this team started 0-7 last year in conference before winning eight games, and they, they seemed like they were on that road again, and then... I mean, what a five-game stretch where they beat both the Arizona schools and then went to UCLA and beat the Bruins at Pauley Pavilion for the first time in school history. Well, Tad Boyle, Larry Brown disciple, is a fundamental coach. They had an excellent shoot-around. It was snap. It was not really exertive. It's really mental this time of year. You want to break through the wall. This is right here at the midpoint of the season. And you start getting that blah, that routine. But Colorado is really sticking close, weathering the emotional run of the white jerseys opening up in this half. Quick catch and shoot on the outside by Deleon Brown. An offensive rebound, and Walton can't stick it. Foul, by the way, was on Lazur Nicholas. Uh, wow, that's got to be a double dribble. He almost jumped right into the lane. <laughs> Nicholas got his second foul uh, before the break. I didn't see much on that one. What, I mean, how do you explain that? It's not like a Euro step. It's like a Euro step on steroids. Nah, or a deer he, step? I don't think he palmed that one. I think that was still okay. His hand didn't go under the ball. That, by the way, is the first Sun Devil turnover. It took him a little more than eight minutes to give the basketball to Colorado. It seems like Arizona State is up by ten points, but Colorado is patient. That's one of the keys, patience on offense. They hadn't taken bad shots. There's a hand check and a foul. Colorado the other night got out to an 8-0 lead in Tucson. That was on Thursday. They led by 10 before Arizona rallied to win by 9. One thing they couldn't do was get to the free throw line, but there's not a lot of teams that can go to the McHale Center and get to the free throw line in that environment. They shot 55% against Arizona's defense and still lost the game. Yeah, it was at the best in over a decade. It's a big league hang with them. And there's an offensive foul. They're going to get Dominic Collier, the senior from Denver, who's coming off of Tad Boyle's bench. He was a point guard last year, fifth in the conference at 51% from the three-point line, so he's a big addition. Offensive spark coming off the bench. Six turnovers, six fouls now for Colorado. Here's Evans. Evans inside, and that's out of bounds. Going to stick with Arizona State, 15 to shoot. It didn't take much to be fired up for this game. 
Colorado beat Arizona State when they were what? Uh, top 10 in the nation. In the they nation. were fourth yep. in the nation. And so you always remember a team that beat you. So outside of the added motivation of trying to get a win, this is a team that really stormed the floor on them and they home court. There's the second turnover. Brown back the other way off the steal through a double team. He misfires. But right there to clean it up is Nate Wright. Excellent job by Brown in the passing lane. He's known for defense. Quick, explosive. And this 2-3 zone has helped them stay in the game. Justice to Mickey Mitchell too hard. Run down on the corner by Brown. Here come the Buffaloes. Collier lost it. Picked up right in front of us by Lake, and he throws it down. Are you supposed to be that athletic at 6'10"? <laughs> That's called something special. He's a JUCO transfer. Grew up in Barbados. I said, I said, are you from Louisiana? He said, no, I'm from the islands. So, oh, yeah. Hey, but this kid and DeAndre Ayton, I don't want to play any uh, pickup ball down in the Caribbean. <laughs> you won't get a lot of shots off. Here's Walton over Lake. Rebounded by Nikki Mitchell, the sophomore transfer from Ohio State. And another missed shot from the outside. Arizona State has really had to settle for points in the paint here. So White from Colorado right there with the basketball. He's a good player. Seven feet coming off a two ACL. And another steal. And Remy Martin is grabbed for a foul. They may want to look at this. I agree with Bobby. Clear path. Offense into defense. Colorado first. Brown coming out. Misses the layup, but it helps when a teammate runs the floor. And then ASU coming back. You know, they want to score over 80 points a game. Look at that right here. You think it's going to be a dunk? He's 6'10", and he can fly, <laughs> folks. And Frank Harvey, one of our officials, they're going to turn around and look at it. There certainly was a grab as Remy Martin was trying to get the breakaway. Greg Nixon, Frank Harvey, and... Bill Vinovich, our officiating crew. I, I saw it clear as day right in front of us. Watch the jersey. Yeah, and, and Remy Martin was ahead up yeah, right, right there. there. A little open gym. <laughs> open <Yeah>. gym move. <laughs> Good hand with the deflection, though. That's the attitude, the focus. He got jersey. He got bicep. Now, this is going to be an easy call here. They switch out the officials, and Frank Harvey will get a... Uh, another opinion as well but steve think about this colorado is coming into a hostile environment arizona state is fired up and playing with desperation and colorado is only down by six points that's only two baskets if you're shooting three pointers think of the environment they played in at McHale center 14,400 rabid fans standing for much of the game on Thursday. Yeah, George there. King played well, 4-5 for five at the three-point line. They played extremely well. And they're looking at another crowd of about 14,000 here tonight as they've uh, added to their seating capacity. That's That certainly is a grab by Collier impeding a breakaway by Martin. Coach Hurley wants that one. He was fired up since shoot-around. Will it be two shots in the ball? It's going to be two shots for Martin. So here's Remy Martin, the freshman from Chatsworth, California. Got it. So a common foul, upgraded to a flagrant one, two shots and the ball. Because he didn't play the ball. Yep. Now in the NBA, you get the bucket, right? You get the bucket and the... And, and, and the traveling and the, call. <laughs> They're yeah. usually traveling going in for the layups. So the Sun Devils have a chance to create further damage here against Colorado. It's an eight-point advantage. It's the biggest of the evening for the Sun Devils. But if they ever get the three-point shots going here in this game, it'll be over for Colorado. And right on cue, another miss, this time by Vitaly Scheibel. I'm telling you, if you're a Colorado fan, I'm keeping an eye on this. I like what they're doing with standing the emotional charge in the first half of the home team. 0 for 6, and a block by Romello White on Walt. Sun Devils 0 for 6 from 3. When they get off the snide now, they're 0 for 7. And a foul. Bobby Hurley lets his guys go. He lets them shoot it. 
doesn't take him out if it's a bad shot or a challenge shot. See Cody coming up. Cody Justice knocking out. But watch this block. Romello right. Nice block. Good players making good plays on each other. Second on Scheibel. So he's going to go to Bobby Hurley's bench here. 846 and counting to go here in this first half. So Tad Boyle, Coach Boyle said we lost, but I like the attitude. And that's the same thing where if you get a foul, it's the way you're playing. Are you playing soft? Are you doing it within a team structure? You're going to win a lot of games with hustle and fire and determination. Both of these teams, you're going to win your share of games when you're playing the right way in a team structure. Foul on Trey Holder, the senior from Los Angeles. Colorado sticking around. Remy White will come in when play is dead. Nice patience. This is what Colorado wanted to do, have some patience on the offensive end and not give live ball turnoff to Arizona State. They got to hurry now, and with two to go, Sean Schwartz misfires on the three. And a second and third chance opportunity for Walton, and he bangs it home. Coach Hurley said he hurt us in the last game. Seven-footer, <laughs> active. I don't think he knows how good he could be yet. He's only going to get better at the coach board. You know, the first time they played, one of the trends was is that Colorado got zero second-chance points as ASU turns it over. And will they count it? Yes, they most certainly will. Bay, nope. They said no bucket and a foul. So we'll go to break. Back to Tempe to expand on that thought next. Welcome back to the desert. 21st ranked Arizona State with a lead tonight against Colorado here in this first half. Let's talk Pac-12 in the RPI top 75. And Joe Lenardi sent out his bracketology last night and had three teams from this conference in Arizona, Arizona State, and USC. And the Trojans are smack in the middle of the two Arizona schools. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Right now in the, in the non-conference season, the Pac-12 didn't hurt themselves because against the Power Five conferences, the ACC, the Big East, the SEC, see they had losing records now it was interesting I was talking with one of the staff and they were saying the Pac-12 has gotten better as the season's gotten going along look at hot teams like Stanford Washington Arizona USC is back and also they were saying in the non-conference season they lost 14 NBA players uh, underclassmen to to the NBA so you lost a lot of firepower throughout those teams in conference they are checking something across from us right now. The officials have gone for another official review. Before we went to the break, the foul was on Justice. Fouls are starting to mount for Colorado. George King, Lazerne Nikolic, and Dominic Collier each have two apiece. 17 fouls for the Buffaloes. I think that Stanford team is sneaky good now that they have all the pieces back together. And Reed Kinley Travis. Wright with the bucket. Reed Travis, Michael Humphrey. Yeah, the pieces back are Pickens is healthy. Oh, Casey Akala is off of uh, you know, the academic problems that he has. He's been reinstated. And Six, eight, long. Dejon Davis is about as good a point guard as you're going to see. Keep an eye on that team. But the story right now is 28 points on 41% field goal attempts. So they are taking advantage of opportunities. And a foul by Walton. And that's going to be another one on the Buffaloes. It's going to be their eighth team foul. And Romello White, the freshman from Georgia, has an opportunity to go to the free throw line. He had a double-double against CU last game. Ten points, 11 boards. Look at the adjustments that the coaching staff, Coach Hurley has done, trying to establish. They need him. They need Blake to make an impact. And for young guys, as they rebound, as they as they score, they go. And so they're able to get some touches at the basket. And he'll be a defensive presence. So one of the bigs we might not see will be Kalani Lawrence in this one. Remy got the offensive rebound on the white miss. And as he goes up, another Colorado foul, much to the chagrin of Tad Boyle. That's going to be team foul number nine. That's going to be the second on Bay now. So now you have four Colorado Buffaloes. Two off the bench, two starters who have two personals apiece. Both teams believe that they play hard. It's a winnable game. And they want to do the same thing. The coaches both know the urgency midseason. They've got to get some quality wins. If Colorado can come in here and beat an Arizona State team that's 21st in the nation, 
that's a big win. Here's Martin, the exciting freshman out of Sierra Canyon High School in Southern California. You want to hear who he was playing with last year? Alongside Marvin Bagley, who's now at Duke. Bottom Adam pick. Seiko, who's at San Diego State Redshirt. Cody Riley, of course, suspended at UCLA. How about that? And, and they didn't win their section championship in Southern California. They lost in the semifinals. Lost in the semifinals with all that horsepower? Yep, to uh, Bishop Montgomery, you know, to <laughs> Ethan Thompson, who we saw at Oregon State. Oh my goodness. The coach still has his job. <laughs> Actually, he, I don't think he does, to be honest with you. There's so much movement, it's hard to figure it all out. There's a travel on name and right. And turnover number 10 for Colorado in this first half. And what did Tad Boyle tell us at the shoot-around today? He said, the reason for our recent surge is we're taking care of the basketball. I can tell when we're not taking care of the basketball, we're not going to win. Yeah, and then you have to come back and play against a defense, an offense that's perpetual motion. Push up. Yep, offensive foul on Remy Martin. Now, neither team ever has to take a bad shot because of the coaching, the discipline of spacing. When you come down and both teams are really playing the right way, the ball moves, spacing, there's ball movement and people movement, which means you never have to take a bad shot. Watch the spacing right here in Colorado. They run it with execution. Schwartz, a handoff to McKinley right before. Nice. Zings the pass inside for Walton, who slams it home. What did we just call? <laughs> what did we just call? Wow. If you space the floor right because of the coaching, the discipline, the standard of excellence, you're going to get a high percentage shot. A great dive right there by McKinley Wright. Mitchell threw it behind his back. He was looking for White, turns it over, and in transition, an easy bucket right there for the Missouri transfer, Naaman Wright. Right now, it's like Colorado's version of rope-a-dope. We're going to let you swing. We're going to let you get excited, and we're just going to stick close to you. Buffalo's hanging around. Another missed three. Arizona State's continuing to pull the 0 for. 0 for 8 now from beyond the arc in this first half. And here's Walton. Into a triple team, and a foul is going to be called. McKinley Wright. This is why he's chasing Chauncey Billups. The dime right there, and then White finishing a seven-footer that went under the radar. How can you be seven feet and nobody see you? In the AAU circuit, basketball circuit. Good finish. Freshman to freshman. Well, a lot of that had to do with the fact that he had two ACL surgeries. So it was flying under the radar and was right there in, in Tad Boyle's backyard in Arvada. Have folks ever checked history and ever heard of Bill Walton? Bill Walton always had uh, egg surgery. Yeah. Boy, he always had light feet. Came out one championship. That was team foul number 10 for Colorado, but only the first on Walton. So Dallas goes to the bench. Early work here for Lucas Seward, a 6'10 sophomore from Brazil who led his high school basketball in the Los Angeles area. But where would Arizona State be without points in the paint and eight made free throws? Colorado has not gone to the free throw line yet here on the road. That was a problem 110 miles south of Tucson on Thursday. That's kicked out of bounds. Kenley Wright is able to get his teammates easy scoring opportunities. As a coach, you always look at your offense. Is my offense getting my team good open shots? They've been getting good shots. Wright with eight to shoot, puts it on the floor, draws a couple of defenders, swings it to an open Schwartz, and that's going to be a blocking foul against the Sun Devils. They're going to get Mitchell. This is what they worked on because this is what McKinley Wright likes to do. Dribble hard and then close out. Uh, I'll yeah. see if that in, in that second half is that's the same you know, call. I think he's moving looks, he's a little moving. bit, but he's Schwartz, I think, pushed off of him right with the arm bar. So. It's good defense, good close out. Technically, he was moving. And so Schwartz gets the benefit of the doubt. You and I can see the coaches after a call. And both coaches are so animated. They're so fired up. It's like two bulls going for the same <laughs> yeah. watering hole. Two bears. But when isn't Bobby Hurley fired up? I mean, he, 
he coaches with the kind of energy that. Uh, well, know. we talked about that. He's an East Coast guy. I'm from D.C. He's from the New Jersey area, and he said, you know, it's so laid back, and folks were just taken aback by my uh, enthusiasm on the uh, sidelines because it's a laid back state. I'm familiar with that? <laughs> oh yeah, without question. <laughs> A lot different than when Bill Frieda was here. <laughs> when Bill Frieda would do those commercials with Lute Olson for Valley National Bank. Or, what a blast. There's a home run pass ahead. It goes to Cody Justice. Boulder has it. It's a three-point game. Good job by Colorado getting back. Cody passed up a shot. Will they finally make a three? No, another miss. That one out of Mickey Mitchell's hand. 0 for 9 from beyond the arc in the first half. Well, either one is knocked down. It's a 1 for 7 for Colorado. And on the break, here comes Remy Martin, the spark plug off the bench. And Martin turns it over. Right back the other way. McKinley to the trailer, in and out, out of the hands of Nicola. She's playing the two-person. Now, this pace favors Arizona State. I don't Oh, what are you doing on that one? Mitchell turns it over again. He's not going to be long for this game. I think Bobby Hurley's ready to get him out. Here's Naaman Wright, the mid-range jumper. Timeout Arizona State with 4.17 to go. It is a one-point game. Maybe Colorado has never led in this game. Right now, they're not fearing the fork, the Buffaloes at all. Bobby Hurley on fire as teams not from beyond the three-point line. All right, let's flash back to earlier in the season. It was a raucous Allen Fieldhouse number two Kansas against uh, the little known Sun Devils at the time. And uh, boy, Kansas did not fear the fork, but the Sun Devils did not fear the Jayhawks at all and got out of there with a victory that afternoon. It was a, a Sunday. That's one for the books there. Yeah, you it was. remember that for a long time because many people go into Kansas and come out <laughs> with an L. Here's an interesting little nugget. The Sun Devils are 0 for 9 from beyond the arc in this game. They're third in the conference at 38% shooting threes. And this is ASU's 41st half of basketball this year. They've had at least one three-pointer make in their previous 40 halves. And right now, they're just looking for any sort of points. They have not scored a bucket now in six minutes. Well, they got to slow themselves down on the offensive end. You can see the urgency and desperation they're playing with. This is a desperate team, but on the three-point line, just take your time. Relax. Yeah, they're getting pretty good looks, yeah. too. Justice, and Justice carries the mid-range jumper. He'll give you 13 a game. He's the Sun Devils' leading scorer. This is a huge stop for Arizona State. You don't want Colorado to tie it up and keep their confidence. Colorado's really relaxed, running a good offense. And another block shot. Taquan Lake. Will defense lead to offense? Shannon Evans. Evans up and under acrobatic bucket. The determination of Arizona State. They know the urgency. They know they've been slipping. And now they're coming out with all guns blazing. That was the first made field goal of the game for Shannon Evans, the transfer from Buffalo. He came over with his head coach, Bobby Hurley. Second leading score, up Ooh. and under. Nice hang time, 16 points a game. Shoots a very good 84% from the free throw line. You want him at the free throw line. And also almost 40% from the threes. You know how good he's been. This is actually his second year at Arizona State after transferring, sitting out a year. So in a year and a half, he's almost scored 1,000 points for the Sunday. That's an open offense. When you score 80 points a game, you're going to need some help. Holder had it blocked. That time it was Nikolic. Every single field goal has been in the paint for ASU. And on the other end, driving and scoring the bucket is Dominic Collier. Colorado is having a mature offensive production, moving the basketball, not jacking up quick shots. Oh, great extra pass inside the lake from Justice, and Lake is right at it again. Wow. Juco transfer 
only gives you eight points per game, and Lake has really kept the Sun Devils in this thing. He's got a half dozen. Well, he just keeps going up. Huh? Gets it close to the rim. Doesn't do what he can do. You won't see him shooting three-pointers in his young career. Anything near the basket, it's a dunk. He's the Sun Devils' leading scorer 18 minutes in, and Lucas Seward, the sophomore with a bucket from the baseline. Well, it's amazing. Daquan Lake, is seven, they're 7-1 seven when he scores in double digits. Last game they did, that's the first time they lost. And also, 8-0 when he has seven rebounds or more. More points in the paint for the Sun Devils as Evans goes to work. Back-to-back -back made field goals for Shannon Evans. Both teams are getting what they want. There's been no separation right now coming in, getting ready to close out the half. Collier puts it on the floor against Cody Justice and draws contact. Coming down, Justice to Lake, a uh, bang! Big time dunk. Then you got to get back on the defensive end, and then Evans again. Boy, that's a thing of beauty. Being able to jump up two hands. You jump higher with one hand, yep. but going up there on the vertical with two. That was impressive. Justice has two fouls. It's going to send Collier to the free throw line here. And he makes the front end of a one and one. Four point game. Coming up on the college basketball halftime report, SEC Big 12 challenge. We'll get to that. Shockers in the ACC. First half highlights and stats as well from a lot of games around the country. Chris Cotta in the studio. Elevating for a three, in and out, another miss. 0 for 10 as Holder can't get it to go down. Yeah, that's rare air for Arizona State. Collier with a three in the corner buries it, and guess what? We're even. On the run out, and it is Evans drawing contact and a foul, so he'll have shots coming, two of them. It's amazing how Colorado has timely baskets. Right being able to create his own offense. Watch this inside the lane and then kicking it out. Unselfish. That's a thing of beauty. Coaches always love when they're able to get field goals off of assists. That means the ball's moving and you're in the right spot. Evans makes the first. It's funny, we had Wright in the Pac-12 opener. He's kind of playing the way he did at Oregon State, right? Not scoring a lot of points, but getting rebounds, starting breaks, getting assists. Yeah, let the game come to him. He's not jacking. He's not looking for stats. He's just playing the game. And it's interesting, he's from Minnesota, but he said he grew up for a time right here in Arizona in Phoenix. Man. I said, where? East Valley, West Valley? said, I was young. can't remember, but I still have some family out here. They had a chance to get um, a handful of point guards after Derek White graduated and then was drafted by the Spurs in the first round. Yeah, he's a pro, 6'5", yeah. real smooth. And a lot of good names. Tad Boyle was running through the names that they were real close to getting, but he felt like this kid Wright was the one that they could get and keep for four years. Although he's playing kind of like Chauncey Billups was playing, at least from a distributing standpoint. When he was uh, a freshman in Boulder. I hate to make that comparison. Well, I mean, documentation beats conversation. Yeah. He's on the charts like Chauncey. Yeah, he's at the fourth best mark by a freshman with 115 assists now in CU history. He's 28 assists shy of Chauncey Billups' freshman record. Well, that's good company. Here's Schwartz driving, and with the left hand gives Colorado their 32nd point to draw this thing even one more time. Nice job by Schwartz. And that's selling for the three-point shot, using the shot fake to get inside with a sweet little left-hand layup. Colorado's never led in the game. We we're tied at 30. We're tied at 32 now. Final 20 seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock is 12 seconds. And Seward a block on Mitchell. It'll stay with Arizona State. The freshman coming in. The coaching staff said he had the biggest learning curve, making the adjustment to college basketball. Nice drive. Seven on the shot clock, 17 to go on the game clock. Keep on Trey Holder. Here's Remy. Remy lost it out of bounds. It's Colorado basketball. They have an opportunity now with the shot clock off to take their first lead of this basketball game going in 
to the locker room. Remember, we were talking about that. It was like the rope of dope. They were just hanging around, sticking around, making timely three point baskets out on the fast break. It was a blue collar grinded out, but they reeled in the home team. What a resilient bunch. This is a, a roster with nine players that never played a minute for CU until this year. And there's an offensive foul. Good call. McKinley Wright arguing his uh, case with Frank Harmon III, who knows a thing or two about good basketball players. His son at Eastern Washington a couple of years ago was the NCAA leading scorer for much of his senior year. If you're a team leading scorer, that says something. When you're the nation's leading scorer, you're in shape. Martin through traffic off the window, no, and that is how the first half ends. At one point, the Sun Devils had an eight-point advantage, but they missed all ten of their three-point opportunities. And Bobby Hurley's bunch goes in to the locker room, tied at 32 with a resilient Colorado Buffalo team who won in Boulder earlier this month in overtime. We're back shortly on the Saturday Showcase. By Five Hour Energy, Steve Quist alongside Adrian Branch. We're going to do something fun right now. We're going to try and do the highlights with uh, the curtain up distraction in front of us right now. Good luck. I'm glad I get to throw this over to you, A.B. You want to take it away? Let's talk about defense because we've had 10 blocks here in the first half. Well, anybody for a block party, you're trying to, uh, again, focus in without being distracted. But on a defensive end, it was a masterpiece. Watch this right here. White coming in. Nice block by King, who wasn't affecting it on the offensive end, and then coming in again, knocking it down. That's what helped keep their poise on the road because this has been a team that's been playing with a sense of urgency. Romello White, who could be foul prone, did an excellent job of defending the basket without fouling. And you know what? <laughs> you guys are doing pretty good. You did a great job. You're doing a great job. Hey, man, I'm a retired athlete, man. <laughs> I like stupid. That's pretty good. But watch this block shot. Coming up, guys knocking it down. It's going to be a test of wheels, and you're going to have the curtain of distraction behind you. Distraction behind you. Well, for the first time this season, the Sun Devils failed to make a three-pointer in a half. And as a result, we're tied in Tempe at 32. Welcome back to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Steve Quiss alongside Adrian Branch. We're going to do something fun right now. We're going to try and do the highlights with uh, the curtain up distraction in front of us right now. Good luck. I'm glad I get to throw this over to you, A.B. You want to take it away? Let's talk about defense because we've had 10 blocks here in the first half. Well, anybody for a block party, you're trying to, uh, again, focus in without being distracted. But on a defensive end, it was a masterpiece. Watch this right here. White coming in. Nice block by King, who wasn't affecting it on the offensive end. And then coming in again, 
knocking it down. That's what helped keep their poise on the road because this has been a team that's been playing with a sense of urgency. Romello White, who could be foul prone, did an excellent job of defending the basket without fouling. And you know what? <laughs> you guys are doing pretty good. You did a great job. You're doing a great job. Hey, man, I'm a retired athlete, man. I like stupid. That's pretty good. But watch this block shot. Coming up, guys, knocking it down. It's going to be a test of wheels, and you're going to have the curtain of distraction behind you. <laughs> he pulled it off perfectly. Here's our first half highlights of uh, what we have highlighted for you. 0 for 10, the first time in a half this year. 40 previous halves, they've made at least one three. In half number 41 of the season, they failed to hit one from the outside. Well, it's interesting, and Colorado only hit two as well, and they both averaged over uh, seven three-pointers for Colorado and nine for Arizona State. But think about this, Colorado's lead score, second lead score, George King didn't score in this game. Well, Arizona State has 22 of their 32 points in the paint. The other 10 from the free throw line. Colorado's bench has 16 points. Arizona State's bench has 13. And you're not getting a lot of contributions out of the likes of Holder. has been held to three. Make it four, rather. And Shannon Evans has a half dozen to go along with Daquan Lake who's got a half dozen coming off the bench. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they start their offense again through Romello White. He got off to a fast start, had four quick points. They were featuring him inside the lane. Now, this is a rebounder's game, too. If there's going to be a lot of bricks out there, you want to go get it off the glass. No, it's, it's a good point. Colorado has out-rebounded Arizona State 25-17. to That was the problem last year for the Sun Devils. They were the worst rebounding team in the Pac-12 Conference because they didn't have the bigs yet, right? in their program. Now they do, and uh, they're much better rebounding team in the top five in the conference. And we start this second half with a quick foul, and they're going to wind up getting the Sun Devil Shannon Evans. And the reason why we came back on with that curtain of distraction we should mention is that if we have as many fouls as we call have in the first half, we're going to see a lot of the curtain of distraction because Colorado is going right toward it right now. So. Well, it's interesting. In five years, in the first half, opponents shoot over 73%, but in the second half, 65%. So we'll see if it works. Create some misses. Evans got hot for a stretch, gives it up to Scheibel, and there it is, their first made three. And it's uh, unsuspecting fella in Scheibel stretching the floor. Coach Hurley gives his team freedom. If you're open at the three-point line, he allows him to let it fly. That's his 11th made three of the season. Walton an extra pass inside to Bay, and he muscles it up over White. Good ball movement. It started with Wright passing it, then the extra pass, finishing with Bay. Kenley Wright had three assists in the first half. Trying to close in on Chauncey Phillips' freshman record. Colorado's never led. Naaman Wright had a good first half. He was four for four and led the Buffaloes with eight points in 16 minutes. Here is McKinley Wright trying to give the Buffaloes their first lead. Well, that was a good shot. He missed that one, but that's a good decision. I like his feel for the game as a young player. Evans, step back three, no. <laughs> so they, no yeah, they can't put back-to-back -back threes up. Well, well, you're, you're, you play at a fast pace, but allow yourself to pass up a good shot for a great shot. Scheibel blocks King out of bounds. It is sticking with the Buffaloes. George King, their veteran, their leader, who had 22 points coming out. He's been slow going as well. You know I like him. Anytime you got a number 24 out there, come on, number 24, don't get your stuff beat. <laughs> Stop getting your shot blocked. Colorado had six blocks in the first half. Arizona State had four, so we've had 11 blocks now in this basketball game. Here's King elevating over Justice on the baseline, and Colorado has their first lead of the game. It took them almost a full 22 minutes of basketball, but they've established it. I am thoroughly impressed with Colorado. Going against both teams are playing a desperate game, playing with the urgency of fierceness. This is not the last lead change in this game, I don't think, at the rate they're playing. Justice, the floater over the seven-footer, Walton. Again, Colorado has some foul trouble. Nikolic has three, three in the first half. 
And making a conscious effort to get King looks in the second half. Holder on the break to Evans and another block. This time it's the freshman McKinley Wright. Both teams, which are not known as shot blocking like Kentucky of years yeah. ago when they had the Harrison twins and those long front lines. But both teams are throwing it out of there. Oh, nice job. McKinley right, blocking it with his left hand. Colorado only averages three blocks a game. Both teams only average three blocks a game, but they've exceeded that number. We may have had a technical foul called against McKinley right here. Unless he was like, get that stuff out of here. I think we're going to have double technicals. Wright got called for a technical, and then Evans. Well, he Janet blocked Evans the shot. Got, yep. yeah. Blocked. So those, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, those two guys were jawing at each other, and the officials have, uh, I believe, warned them in the first half. It's called a literary session. <laughs> so double technical, and Holder shoots it up, and Holder misfires again. Holder was two of six shooting in that first half. Name and right, and a foul underneath. Let's go back and visit the double technicals. After the block. Yeah, it was heading that way. It, it was wow. heading that, but it was leading before that one where Wright was up and Shannon. And a little frustration building, yeah. You, you think so? You set the tempo on the play before the play. Yep. Again, both teams, both guys are trying to win for their team. Good crossover dribble by Holder. He got an extra second to make that three. That's his first of the ball game, and ASU back out in front. Bay, the offensive rebound to Walton, too hard, and Lake with a rebound. Holder lost it, got it back. This is when Trey is at his best, when he can play off speed, herky jerky. Scheibel with the left hand rolling off the screen was open for a three and misses again for Arizona State. Two of 16 now shooting three. Got to feel very fortunate to get out of here with a win when you start like that. Right to Bay. Right does most of his damage right there in the center court. You know who's a point guard who did, did, does a lot of damage still? Chris Paul. And Bay and a foul. That'll be a no basket. Chris Paul is a point guard, especially early in his career, that always played 15 feet in it. And McKinley Wright plays right in the center of the court, and he just carves you up with that extra pass once he's inside the lane. Foul on Lake, that's his second. And the curtain of distraction is going to have to wait a little bit longer. They said a, a foul on the floor, no shooting foul. Colorado had Four free throws in the first half. They made all four. And Seward, Lucas got a good look and is able to get up and get it off the window. The Buffalo workman like steady, resilient, not paying attention to this crowd that's been loud and really cheering their team on, knocking down clutch baskets. Ball movement. Remy Martin. Oh, another miss, and the rebound cleared by Nikolic of Colorado. Two of 17 now. Haven't seen anything like this. Well, you like to see him inside now. That three-pointer has a lid. See if you can play inside out first and try to get to the free throw line as well. Wright gets the screen by Walt. Inside of 10 to shoot again. Name and Wright over the top to Walt. One on one, the ISO backs in with the right hand, missed the shot. And an offensive rebound by Walt. That was the trend in their in their win up at Boulder. They got 15 second chance points yeah. in that game after getting none in the first half. And you've got to defend now without foul. And the shot up a three right in front of the bench. Nikolic, who's playing with three personals. Colorado up by three. Well, they're doing a good job on the defensive end. Arizona State's helping them out by missing so many three-point shots, but they're holding them to one and done. Mitchell over the top lines. Daquan Lake in stride for the bucket. Same thing again.
Colorado being patient, that's one of their keys. Rebounding and offensive patience, and they've had that both in this game. Seward can make those, he misses, and Lake does not miss a rebound opportunity, does he? Martin bounce pass in the lane, Mitchell disrupted to a streaking Lake, who scores the bucket. He was their leading scorer in the first half, and now he's picked up where he's left off. Good hands, running the floor, and you don't need to run an offense for him. He gets his on putbacks and dump offs. See if White can get it right here. That's a good matchup. Two long centers. Oh, Walton. I Let like his that. Defender go by and slams it home. I like big guys that know what they're doing. I want a world championship with a big guy that knows what he's doing. Call Kareem Abdul Jabbar. That's right. You like big guys and you cannot lie. In and out, <laughs> Martin. Devil shooting sub 35% now. Three on the wing by name and right. Lake's got another rebound. Really Martin speeds the ball up. Open is Justice. Up wide open. He buried four threes against CU and Boulder at a 16 point game. And right there, Arizona State back out in front by two. That's going to stick with the Sun Devils. Wow, we've had six lead changes. A break in the action. Almost seven minutes into this second half. The of college basketball is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. Welcome to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. Mill Avenue, Tempe, Arizona. We're in the desert tonight on a fantastic Saturday night. Middle of the Pac-12 season. Great crowd inside Wells Fargo Arena. And the curtain of distraction getting ready to go. They're eagerly awaiting a trip to the free throw line by Colorado. But we had quite a flow there. The first seven minutes of this first half, we had a few stoppages. Almost seven minutes, 27 field goal attempts, no free throws. So, Fast-moving second half right here, and those teams they just couldn't wait for that break right there to get a little added. Yeah, either. exactly. You, you have both teams that have four substitutions out there because the pace has been so torrid. And when you're coming in the second half, it's a close game. You want to be able to execute with high percentage shots and not give away foolish turnovers. We've been tied three times. We've had six lead changes after Arizona State had an eight-point lead early on. Terrific pass inside. Nikolic gets it into Seward, who finishes. What difference right now between Colorado and the home team, Arizona State, is Colorado is determined to play inside out first, and if the three-pointer is there, they'll take it. But Arizona State's DNA is to bomb away at the three-point line and then work their way inside. They're bombing away now, in and out, by Shannon Evans and... The Sun Devils are three for 20 from beyond the arc in this basketball game. Well, you look in the second half, they've taken more three-point shots than two-pointers. And right now, when it's not hitting, that's an opportunity that you didn't get a chance to drive the ball or get to the free throw line. Good ball movement, good patience. Not looking for the three unless it's there. Nice King step back. takes it and makes it. And Colorado's back on top by three. They have the precision of a surgeon's knife right now with the determination to play for one another and find the best shot opportunity they've been getting. Justice, a deep three. Right, they're going to keep letting it go until it finally falls. Pick and roll by King, their second leading scorer. Knocking it down. Watch that pick and then a pop. Three-pointer, a thing of beauty. We show you a starry desert night. We have to talk about stars in the NBA. We'll have an NBA Sunday special for you on ESPN, 6 Eastern. Ben Simmons, a former college star, albeit for a year. And the Sixers take on Russell Westbrook in the Thunder. The Thunder have won the last 17 games against the 76ers, dating back to March 8th of 2009. And, of course, you can always catch this on the ESPN app as well. Back alongside Adrian Branch, I'm Steve Quist. We greet you from Wells Fargo Arena here in Tempe, Arizona, where the Sun Devils trail Colorado 48 to 45. Arizona State 
having by far its worst three-point shooting evening of the season. They're 3 of 21. Earlier this season, they were 5 of 23 against Vandy and still managed to win the game against Vanderbilt. So they've done it before. Yeah, they, they come back. They have had nine games, with six games, where they've come back with a deficit of over nine points. So they can come back and play with the urgency late in the second half. Yeah, that's a great point. They're not going to have any fear whatsoever. And a shove by Deshaun Schwartz of the Colorado Buffaloes. It seems like I've watched a lot of Arizona State basketball this year. It seems like they build themselves a big hole, and then it becomes a rocket yeah. movie. Right? Yeah, you, exactly. You hear the music. That's a great analogy. <laughs> I mean, Xavier was one of those games in Kansas. Were they down like 15 to two on the road at Allen Fieldhouse and still managed to win? Why not go back into the paint? Why count it? Well, when the three-point shot's not working. Oh, I like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Drink milk, young man. Drink milk. Okay, right here inside the paint. We've been waiting for that. Give yourselves an opportunity to get a high-percentage shot. Romello White, they were waiting on you, the red shirt freshman. Nice basket. He was out last season as he worked on his academics. It's only a 59% free throw shooter, and he's been there quite a bit. I mean, 115 attempts, so you know who to foul the clutch. Can't complete the three-point play. Colorado still by a point. So Colorado's offense, they're not fishing for the three-pointer yet. They're looking to see if they can get a backdoor cut. Schwartz, That's a good shot. Yep, he's been sneaky good in the corner all year and gets the friendly bounce on the road tonight. And he's a shooter and score. He's a freshman. He's put together some productive minutes off the bench. One of those nine guys on the roster who had not played a single minute for CU coming into the season. And Holder left open on the left wing and counters with a three of his own. It's a good job by Trey not fading on the three-point shot. He watched it go in, held his form. Holder has ten points to join Lake as the leading scorers for Arizona State. Holder scores 19 a game. That's the fourth best mark in the Pac-12 and a turnover. Colorado hasn't had one of those in a while, and Mitchell got it disrupted at the rim. Holder got it! Timeout, Tad Boyle and Buffalo, and the mojo now belongs to Bobby Hurley's team. Trey Holder, the leading scorer, putting himself in a position to be all conference. Knocks down a huge shot. Welcome back inside Wells Fargo Arena. On the campus of Arizona State University, check the Pac-12 scores today. Arizona survives at the McHale Center over Utah. Are they lucky or good? Now, they, they got lucky in this one. They were real good in the first half. Unbelievable luck, but well, well, they'll take it. They'll take it. And Oregon leading the Civil War. There we go. Nine. Got my little picture in there. You know my wife would say, cute always wins. <laughs> oh, there we go. Nice job, guys. <laughs> the shirtless uh, young man oh. earlier just stopped me speechless. <laughs> it's a great, intense environment inside Wells Fargo Arena. They actually took down some signs up top to include six more rows, about 4,000 more seats, so they can get about 14,100 in this building. And not quite standing room only here tonight. It will be when Arizona comes here. Usually we say at the five-minute mark, you got a game. But right now, it's 945. It's game on. Yeah, good timeout by Tad Boyle. After Holder made a couple of threes, he's got 13. Martin picks up Schwartz. Mitchell with a foul on Seward. Steve, they run a motion offense to try to get the defense off balance and will throw the cross-court pass out in the corner. Colorado has gotten uh, mileage out of that. That's been their go-to play. But again, they want to break you down to see if you'll get caught reaching or leave them open for a three-point shot. At the worst, we're three Sun Devil fouls away from the curtain of distraction. 
Here's Brown with a three. And a rebound by Mickey Mitchell, the Ohio State transfer. They'll have two more transfers coming in next season. A third KU transfer, Carlton Bragg, left school back in December, said he's going to play at New Mexico. There's a five-star forward. The, they'll have a five-star to Sean Cherry in the corner. Evans! That was good before it left his hands because he slowed himself down and gathered up straight up and straight down. They are feeling it now. That number's in the second half, 6 for 14. This is a big possession offensively right here for Colorado. They go inside to Seward, and what a great pass to the paint. What a thing of beauty. Both coaches playing to their strengths. The strength of Arizona State is to be free, to be loose, to play outside in. And then Colorado answering with a workmanlike, business-like performance. Holder. Uh, it's silly now. Set at the 9.45, game on, here we go. Colorado has managed to stay in this thing because of 28 bench points. They go back to Seward again, and that time he's fouled. And if that's in the act of shooting, we're going to have the curtain of distraction. <laughs> yep, two shots are coming, I'm excited. We've been talking about it all night. I took one for the team. I want you to know that Ooh, again. It feels like I Christmas took morning. one for the team. It came out. I can't believe that, folks. <laughs> Feels like Christmas morning right now. What presents are we going to open a up right now? A retired NBA uh, veteran came out on the curtain of distraction. Distraction. <laughs> Good work yet. Oh, we had one of the minions. All right. Now they'll change one more time. Big free throw, by the way. Seward. Can't lose focus of how big a game this is for both these teams. Maybe more so for number 21, Arizona State, who at one point was ranked third and was on the number one line, according to Lenardi. And we got the, uh, the Toro. Lucas Seward. Wow. This young man is coming out 77% for the free throw line, 38% for threes. He's come out giving them some great energy. Evans. Oh, it's just their night, A.B. Enthusiasm. This place is ready to explode with a stop and run out. They're channeling their inner Bo Kimball, Hank Gathers, and Jeff Fryer. And that is an offensive foul by Bay, giving possession to Arizona State when we come back. ASU with the big half starting at the three point line. They're coming out with a sense of desperation, knocks it down, gets back up and says, Guys, feel the love. Give me love. Where's the love? Eight second half threes has the Sun Devils up seven with seven and a half to play, A.B. Yeah, it's interesting. They started three for 21, but now they're five for five, bombing away. Coach Hurley giving his guys freedom. What will ice cream do? Ice cream <laughs> the day before will get you knocking down three pointers in the second half. I want some of that ice cream, for goodness sakes. Vanilla, please. <laughs> We had mentioned the fact that it just looked like they were not going to abandon shooting threes, right? They were 0 for 10 in the first half. They're 8 for 16 here in the second half. But they just, I mean, said we are going to live by the three or die by the three tonight. Look at those numbers, like you said. In the first half, 0 for 10. It was cold. It was a rebounder's dream because there's a lot of bricks, a lot of misses. And then in the second half, they've come to life more true to their personality of committing to shoot that three ball. And it's been Holder with four three-point makes. Evans with a pair. And they keep shooting them from a little bit deeper each time, too. Colorado needs to make a defensive stop as they fall behind seven on the road. Remy Martin. Holder with five to shoot. Wright picks him up even deeper. Wright got a piece of that basketball for another block here for about, Colorado. How about speed on speed? Trey Holder is elusive, and McKinley Wright staying with him and challenging that shot. That's a, That was impressive. This is a high-low right there on the three-point corner. 
and Wright attacks the rim and lost it. Martin back the other way. Evans with King closing! The last two shots, now you're seeing a 2-3 zone. This is the first time we've seen a 2-3 zone from the home team. Largest lead of the night for Arizona State as they've made nine second half threes. And Bay with the assist from Seward. It's down to an eight point game. See, they'll make quick work of that zone because you've got Trey Holder, six footer in the back line. So Bay can go up there. Seward has given Colorado everything they've needed. Rebounding, shooting, assisting. And he leads the team with 10 points. They have 30 bench points and that is going to be a foul against Dequan Lake. <laughs> I really enjoy the, the enthusiasm of Coach Hurley. He and Tad Boyle. Boy, they're intense on the sidelines. <laughs> now, they're not counting that basket. It remains 65-57. But that's going to be the third foul on Lake. Mixing up the defense now. It looks like Arizona State's going back to a man to man. That last possession was a zone. It didn't deter Colorado. They feel like if Arizona State gets two stops here, this thing will be over. Inside of six minutes to go. Wright elevates over Evans. Rebound Justice. That's stop number one. is quick with that basketball, but McKinley can sit down without fouling. Look at this. This is a good matchup. Speed on speed. Holder blows right past him and lays it in. Got a good screen up high. Yeah. Holder with 18. King, a badly needed three. Justice, another rebound. I thought that was one of the first rush shots of Colorado. Justice for the dagger. Minutes left. You don't need to shoot it in a hurry. You're in control, but nice job, George King. Big three right Big there basket. for King, and a quick timeout called by the Colorado bench. A seven-point advantage for Arizona State with 4:55 to go in regulation. They are playing the right way. Right, creating a three. The freshman reminded me of a young Chris Paul passing it to the upperclassmen and knocking down a huge three-pointer. Who wants to get themselves a conference win? This is still anybody's game. Well, obviously Colorado's going to have to make not only one stop, but perhaps back-to-back -back stops here, or maybe three stops in a row. I've heard a lot of coaches say. Three in a row. We get three in a row, man. We are, we are up and going and rolling. Well, both teams right now have taken each other's best shot. We still have four minutes and 55, basically right under five minutes. And when it's right now, this time of the game, it's all about execution, paying attention to detail, getting high percentage shots, the right people shooting the basketball, and then make or miss, get yourself back, both teams, and sit down in the defensive stance. Colorado has already erased one eight-point deficit in this basketball game, but it took them much longer than four minutes and 55 seconds to do it. A lot of times for Arizona State, their greatest strength is their greatest weakness. Their greatest strength is playing fast and shooting a three-pointer. But then just like that, with Cody Justice coming down and shooting an ill-advised three-pointer, they don't need that one. Yeah. Run some time off the clock. How much fun has this been? We're talking seventh place against tenth place. <laughs> we're on the edge of our seats here in nearly a sold-out Wells Fargo Arena. Both teams are better than their records indicate, at least for Arizona State. They're much better than a... 10th place team in the pack. Well, great point. Colorado, I like what I've seen. With, I like what I've seen with both teams. Colorado is playing the right way. They're down by seven, but yet they're still in this game. Arizona State, the three point line opened up for them, and now they've been shooting respectable in the second half. Foul was on Seward. That's his second. He'll send Evans to the free throw line. The Buffalo transfer, his second season eligible here at Arizona State. And the potential to be a 1,000-point scorer here at Arizona State in just two seasons. He didn't do that in his previous two seasons at Buffalo, but he was a big scorer there. It's 
Still a lot of scoring. He's upset that the defender bumped into him while he's shooting the free throw. Touched him again. So Evans leaves free throws there. Keeps the door open. Leaves the second one. Eight point game, four and a half to go. Aim and right, quiet in the second half, gonna get the, would have had that bucket. My goodness, bad luck for Colorado. Either King or Bay touched the cylinder and they should not have done that. Looked like King coming in for the help side. This thing's going down, we're gonna look at it again. This ball's falling for a bucket, you're in within six. Yeah, that's a nice job by Wright. The high archer, then, yep. Yeah, that was going Touched in. The rim. That's a good call, but something wipes out a field goal. Something you would see in six period gym class. Hanging okay. <laughs> on the rim. Uh, I don't know. I, my gym <laughs> class, I never saw anybody that could get up to that rim. Oh, okay. Not even an eight point. You know, I mean, in the mean streets of Orange County, where I grew up. <laughs> Suburban and, hood, huh? That's right. <laughs> Foul on Colorado, a blocking foul as White turned around to try and get a shot. And that's on Seward, who has 10 points, the leading scorer for Colorado, all off the bench. That's going to be his third. Seward has played a beautiful game. He could do no wrong. 10, 22 minutes, 10 points, two rebounds. Just a good field. They can run an offense through. Up shoots 62% from the field, one of the top marks in the Pac-12. Scoring almost 12 points and seven and a half rebounds a game. One small ball now. Bay is going to be the center. George King's going to be the power forward. Two interior players. Sun Devils 11 of 16 at the free throw line. White is just a 59% free throw shooter. I think we remarked that earlier in the first half when he went to the free throw line and had some trouble. He was one of the keys. He had to have an impact. And right now when he's making clutch baskets like that, that's an impact. Made one of two. Bay secures the rebound for Colorado. Buffalo's down nine. Need a bucket. Four minutes to go in regulation. If you're Arizona State, you don't want to foul and stop the clock and give up an and one because Colorado is a patient team. They're going to look for their best opportunity or see if you can make a mistake. Here's right against Holder to the hole, and it's blocked from behind by Holder. Sun Devils have it back. They're in transition. This is where they kill you. Evans in front of his bench. That stretches the lead out to a dozen. Right in the lane. The last three shots from Shannon have been where he's just taken his time, gone straight up, and just shot an easy ball. Wasn't fighting himself. How about 10 threes in the second half for Arizona State after they didn't make one in 10 opportunities in the first half? Committed to what they do, shoot the three-pointer. Holder takes the shot clock down to six and draws contact. And we must break. The three-pointer is a thing of beauty when a three-point team is shooting it, coming down and posing for a picture. Backspin, follow through, and then let's get them excited. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. You know, I know the headline tonight is going to be the fact that ASU has made 10 three-pointers in the second half, but we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the defensive effort that they've had on McKinley Wright and George King. Those are two guys that average almost 15 points per game. Wright has been held to just two points on one of 10 shooting, and King has eight in this game. Yeah, they have. They've done a, a committed job because in the second half, when they played them, those guys were the ones that really took it to overtime it was the difference. But the commitment at shoot-around was to tag 24, wherever King was, and, of course, with Wright. They're going to make good plays, but they haven't been dominated. Nearly half of Colorado's points have come from their bench. 30 of their 62 from the bench. Seward is starring Seward, 4 for 5, playing very well. 
Boulder pretty automatic here from the free throw line. He had 24 points against Colorado in Boulder. In four seasons at Arizona State, now up over 1,600 career points. He's sixth all time, moving closer to jumping over Headache Smith, the name of the past. Headache Smith. <laughs> Headache Smith. I think Eddie House is over 2,000 points, and Eddie House never, never saw a shot he didn't like. Paid off for him, all time lead score. That was last touch by Arizona State. It's going to be Colorado basketball. They have 16 to shoot, 240 to go in regulation. A win by the Sun Devils gets him to four and five in the conference. Doesn't look like Colorado is built for scoring quickly, so you've got to make quick decisions and attack the basket. That's a good attack. Sun Devils have to go on the road after this at Washington, at Washington State. Hot team in Washington, that's for sure. Yep. And we're going to have the curtain of distraction again after the foul. Just the second time we've seen them here in the second half. They've moved now to the left of the basket. They, it didn't work to the right of the basket. Come up with these ideas. <laughs> That's, this one's a little disjointed. Yeah, it worked. They keep stats on it too, right? Yeah, 65% in the second half. I didn't think it worked. Uh, you know, they got stats for it. Here's Holder taking it to the bucket against Collier. No, but right there to clean it up. Who else? Romello White. That was created by Trey Holder uh, drawing two defenders and leaving a rebounding lane for Romello White. Romello White's only got four rebounds. It's felt like he's had 15 at least. Key baskets, too. They're not cosmetic rebounds. He's got 10 points, so he's in double figures. Trying to trap a ball handlers. you got three ball handlers out here, so Arizona State is a tough team to trap. The biggest lead of this basketball game for the Sun Devils is the current 14 we're at with 1.52 to go. How much of an asset is that when it's coming down the home stretch and you have two veterans, two seniors, and Trey Holder, who's able, Shannon Evans as well, who's able to knock down uh, their free throws. Bay just fouled out with six points and five rebounds, and Holder a chance to put this thing away at the free throw line. They both shoot over 80%. That's big time. That's the, you just give them the car keys and say, take me home, especially when a team is playing catch up and have to foul. We were tied at 32 at the half. Sun Devils could not make a three in the first half, and they have made 10 of 20 in the second half. Did not abandon what has worked through the first 20 plus games for Arizona State. Got to go quicker. So you got to go quicker than this. Taking too much time right now. Kinley Wright, one of ten shooting. Collier. And that jump shot is good and a quick timeout as he nailed that one over White. You want to go even quicker. Uh, so for McKinley Wright, you've got to turn on the Jets. Get up there within two seconds and start attacking the defense because it's only a minute 35 left. Colorado is out of timeouts now after Tad Boyle just used that one. Now, that's a whooping in the second half by the Sun Devils here. What a three-point line opened up. You live by the three-pointer, you die by the three-pointer. They were committed to doing what they needed to do, but also they started on a defensive end. The activity, the enthusiasm, this, the fire that they had, especially on George King and Wright. How about Shannon Evans in this second half here? That was the first one right there where he took his time and slowed himself down. Then that was the second three-pointer, back-to-back. Confidence works wonders when you've been struggling outside on the heart. Evans, four of six shooting threes in the second half after 0 for three in the first half. Evans has a team leading 62 threes now. You think Bobby Hurley was telling his team, just keep shooting. We've talked yeah, about this before. As long as they're good shots. As long as they're yeah. good shots. Oh, yeah. Little Hawk. There you go. I <laughs> love it. Perfect uh, <laughs> local news anchor hair, too. <laughs> oh, wow. He's saying he's going to grow up to be a play-by-play -play guy. 
Let's hope not. <laughs> I still have, I think, a few more useful years in this business. I don't need a good-looking kid like that to knock me out of the chair. 14-point lead. Full-court press now for Colorado. And Evans pushes it up the floor. Remy Martin's been pretty quiet with five points. Well, he pushed the tempo, too, though. He, when he gets the basketball, you have to catch him. Four guards right now. So that means you have four good ball handlers, especially with Evans and right there, Trey Holder, shooting over 84% from the free, uh, free throw line. And Holder up to Mitchell for perhaps the exclamation point. He's mismatched shoes, too. He's balling with his black and white shoes. Notice that shoot around as well. well. It's a conscious effort and a block by Evans. And Arizona State leads by 16 under a minute to go. And I think they'll call the dogs off now, Colorado. No sense now. What a remarkable second half by the Arizona State Sun Devils at home tonight. They're going to be 16 and 5, but more importantly, 4 and 5 in the conference. A desperate game both teams needed. Bobby Hurley wants to spend a 30-second time out here with nine to go on the shot clock. And I like this move. This is a classy move here. Get some of those younger guys into this basketball game here with 34.1 to go. So there's still some work to do for the Sun Devils the rest of the way out. And a road trip at Washington is always tough. They'll start with Washington. That'll be on the first. And then they'll play on the fourth at Washington State. And then you come home for three big ones. USC, UCLA, and Arizona. And, I mean, that's the season right there, right? Yeah, uh, the big games speak for themselves. You don't need a motivation to play against a USC, a UCLA, or Arizona. That speaks for itself. It's these games right here where you're right in the middle. And you've got to play a desperate game. And that is Fogarty. Grant Fogarty, a sophomore from Desert Mountain High School in Scottsdale, Arizona. And a foul on the Sun Devils. I never played in garbage time in college, but in the pros, I was the king of garbage. Oh, you were? I was the king. I was getting some stats. You know what I learned about? You know what I learned about garbage time in the NBA? The paycheck still clears, right? <laughs> All right, one more curtain of distraction. Yeah, it's not a it's not a garbage check, that's for sure. And they go with a garbage time curtain right here. They still got it. My mom used to say, don't call basketball garbage time. OK, sorry, Mom. <laughs> the, the baby sawing the head off of the Toro. 14-point <laughs> game. Classy job coming back at the three-point line was the difference. And they did a good job on George King, who's the leader of Colorado. Martin will dribble it out. He's going to allow Jordan Salzman to touch it last, the freshman from Locust Valley, New York. And the Sun Devils have won their fourth in the conference. So for Adrian Branch, I'm Steve Quist. We say so long from Tempe, Arizona. Coming up next on ESPNU, it's more college basketball as Boise State takes on Air Force from Clune Arena. Good night, everybody.